Andrew Cahoon is head of Asia PAC uh, Sovereign Ratings at Fitch Ratings. He's in Tokyo for us this morning. First up, what did you make of this move here? And are there any implications for sovereign ratings in the region looking ahead? I don't think there are any implications for sovereign ratings just from what we've seen coming out of the People's Bank on Saturday. Um, the statement was uh, quite vague. Uh, I think we need to put it in context of the forthcoming G20 meetings and also of the recent thrust of Chinese economic policy strategy, which is to strengthen domestic demand and rebalance the economy away from a dependence on net trade. That's what it's all about here. On the right track, they have, of course, been seeing wages go up, particularly in eastern provinces. Is it going to be enough to have that sort of endogenous growth theory that Gordon Brown used to go on a few years ago? Um, well, I'm not sure about endogenous growth theory, but I think uh, the authorities have acquiesced in a wave of labor militancy, which has pushed up wage growth in some key provinces and exporting sectors. Uh, to, try and re, uh, to try and sustain uh, dom domestic demand while they rein back from stimulus that was put in place in 2009 as the world economy went into a steep recession. Uh, that stimulus, it it... That stimulus on, had the consequence that it led to very rapid credit growth uh, and we think that may have led to the build-up of some risks in the banking system. The authorities would like to rein back from that to take some of the steam out of, uh, for example, house price growth. Um, but they want to keep demand growing while also rebalancing as their trade partners would like to see. And so we need to see it all uh, as a whole. Does good things on the inflation front, doesn't it? And probably staves off any interest rate hikes in China for a while. Uh, I think the uh, kind of measures, that the sort of size of exchange rate move that we're likely to see is unlikely to have a significant dampening effect on inflation uh, in, the, in the near term. I think there's a bit of steam behind inflation and we think that uh, prices, price growth may average about 3.5% this year. Andrew, I want to get to, to Japan now. I mean, you are visiting the country at the moment. The concerns about the debt problem there. Walk us through the issues facing Japan. Well, we have Japan rating on uh, AA with a stable outlook. Uh, the stable outlook reflects, in our view, the uh, sovereign's very strong financing flexibility uh, stemming from its access to a deep and liquid pool of domestic savings. But in a piece that we put out in April, we argued that the ratings are likely to come or could come under downwards pressure um, in the medium term, so from two years or, th or maybe three years' time, unless the authorities can put in place a credible fiscal adjustment strategy. Um, the next couple of months are an interesting time. We have a major fiscal policy statement tomorrow and a voting for the upper house in July, which together will uh, let us read some of the runes on the domestic politics and see how strong the consensus is on uh, narrowing the budget deficit. Yeah, I mean, it is the, the public debt is the world's biggest, I believe, twice the size of its GDP. And I think Nato Khan, the new prime minister, wants to actually reduce that by 2020 to balance things out. Do you think he can do it? Well, 2020 is, uh, is a medium to, or a long-term objective and quite a lot would be possible over that kind of time frame. As I've said, uh, the next couple of months will be interesting in uh, gauging whether the political process will allow rapid fiscal consolidation. Um, I think uh, the, the other thing that gives strength to Japanese public finances in the short term is that actually quite a high share of the debt is held within the public sector. We think about half of the stock of Japanese government bonds is held by other bits of the Japanese public sector, which also supports the sovereign's uh, financing prospects in the near term. Uh, quickly, there are people saying consumption tax has to be raised, but we've got uh, elections coming up. Do you expect a move there when that happens? after that election, I should say? It's certainly possible. Um, I think the uh, tax policy will have to be taken as a package. So it may be that uh, we see a rise in consumption tax. This is just me speculating. I don't have any inside information on this, but a cut in corporate tax rates, uh, which overall could add up to a reflationary um, tax package. <coughs>
Andrew, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Andrew Cahoon there from uh, Fitch Ratings, just uh, going through some of the impact from what we saw out of China announcing that they would, uh, at some later date, be becoming more flexible on their currency, the yuan, also talking about the problems facing Japan with its public debt. Now